We conducted our study because we know that esophageal adenocarcinoma is a known complication of Barrett's esophagus and part of the known progression of disease in it. However, there's not a lot of data out there looking at what the good follow-up standards are for patients who have undergone treatment for their early adenocarcinoma with endoscopic mucosal resection. Even the most recent guidelines that have come out have not really suggested a standardized approach to following up these patients. So we decided to look at our subset of patients who had undergone endoscopic mucosal res resection for their T1A adenocarcinoma to see what was done for them and try to figure out what the best approach in following them up was. Esophageal adenocarcinoma and its risk is really dependent on whether or not the Barrett's esophagus has dysplasia in it. Non-dysplastic Barrett's carries a relatively low risk of developing oh, I'm sorry, esophageal adenocarcinoma. It's about 0.1% per year risk, where patients with high-grade dysplasia can have a much increased risk of about 7% uh, risk per year. So we have 31 patients that we collected in a consecutive manner who had undergone endoscopic mucosal resection for T1A adenocarcinoma. And this, this study was a retrospective review, so there are some limitations with that. But what we found that is that after endoscopic mucosal resection for, for these masses, we actually had very good outcomes as far as tumor recurrence. Um, only about, only two patients out of the 31 had a recurrence of, of tumor. And those recurrences uh, occurred at about 70 and 71 months, respectively, in those two patients. And out of 31 patients, that's about a 6% recurrence rate. Um, the other thing that we found surprising in our study, it's thought that patients with long segment Barrett's esophagus are actually at a greater risk for developing adenocarcinoma. And what we found in our study is that about 54% of patients uh, had short segment Barrett's esophagus, which was a little surprising to us and an interesting finding. EMR is recommended whenever you see a nodule in Barrett's esophagus. As we survey these patients, or even on their very first initial endoscopy, if we see a nodule within the Barrett's mucosa, it should really be removed with endoscopic mucosal resection. Before, some people were recommending to do endoscopic ultrasound, and now part of the recommendation is that you don't even need that. You can just take that nodule off with endoscopic mucosal resection, because sometimes you can find just an intramucosal cancer, and they're really that's the T1A adenocarcinoma we really wanted to look at. So I think our take home message is really that we need to better define a standardized approach to following up patients with T1A adenocarcinoma in patients with Barrett's esophagus. And those that undergo EMR, it's really unclear what their follow up should be and what's the best way to approach them. Do they need a PET CT scan in order to look for other areas of disease or active disease? How many PET CT scans should they get until we're comfortable saying that's enough surveying? And do they need to see a medical oncologist if they have clear margins on their EMR specimen? So I think a lot more research is needed and bigger multi-center trials would be really great. But I think it's, a, it's an excellent approach to treating patients with early adenocarcinoma, but there's definitely some, something lacking in what we need to describe as far as the standardized approach to caring for them.